Married with children scenes we simply can't forget. Married with Children was one of those shows that were not big hits in the beginning. The first season of the show aired in 1986 on Fox, which was not a huge TV station at the time. The show wouldn't have been the huge hit it became later if it wasn't for the unintended consequences of an activist's action. Learn more about the show and the most memorable Married with Children scenes we simply can't forget. Marcy's Namesake Peggy Bundy had a best friend on the show named Marcy Darcy. The character was actually named after the Cosby Show's executive producer. Before Married with Children was aired, its working title was actually not the Cosbys. Cars Cars The footage used in the show's original opening sequence was actually a clip from the movie National Lampoon's Vacation. The station wagon shown running along the highway is actually the Ford Crown Victoria of the Griswolds. Al Bundy's car on the show was actually not a Dodge, but a 1972 Plymouth Duster. No Notice Ending The series finale aired on May 6, 1997. Little did the cast know that this would be the very last episode because Fox executives would cancel the show without telling them. Ed O'Neill, who played Al Bundy on the show, was on vacation. A couple at another table were talking about the show's cancellation, which Ed overheard. O'Neill then supposedly paid for the couple's meal to thank them for the information. Long Way to Success Married with Children was not a hit when it aired, considering that Fox was not a huge network back then. That was about to change. During Season 3, the episode Her Cups Runneth Over was aired. The episode centered around the story of Al Bundy trying to find a brassiere for his wife at a lingerie store. He was accompanied by his friend Steve Rhodes. The premise of two straight men looking for a specific type of bra in a lingerie store was rife with plenty of cheeky jokes, prompting Terry Ricolta, a family values activist from Michigan, to speak against the episode, strongly encouraging advertisers to boycott the show. Although several brands did, it was the huge wave of media attention that gave the show the boost it needed. Every year thereafter, as long as the show aired, the cast and crew would send Ricolta flowers. Peggy's Style Katie Seagal played Peggy Bundy in the show. She had a signature look, big red hair, styled in a bouffant and tight-fitting clothes. Seagal had used a large wig for her audition, and the producers loved the idea, so she got to keep her look. Ed O'Neill nearly missed out on the role. Ed O'Neill's reputation preceded him. He was mostly cast in dramatic roles prior to his audition, so the producers were not huge fans. When he did audition, however, he nailed it. Life Imitating Art Ed O'Neill received a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. The star is right in front of a store selling shoes, which is just hilarious because O'Neill played a disgruntled shoe salesman. By the time the series was canceled, O'Neill was reportedly paid $500,000 for each episode. Ale Goes Phoning During the show's run, lucky fans of the show would receive personal phone calls from Ed O'Neill himself as Al Bundy. However, fans will only receive the call collect because Al was a cheapskate. Cast Troubles According to Ed O'Neill, the only member of the cast that he didn't get along with was Amanda Bierce, who played Marcy Darcy. Their conflict reportedly started during the third season when Bierce supposedly became more snarky and masculine. In 1993, Bierce came out as a lesbian. Well, she got married in 2010, she did not invite O'Neill and David Faustino. Good Dog Buck Buck was the Bundy family's pet dog who appeared on the show until the 10th season when he retired. Buck crossed the Rainbow Bridge on May 25, 1996, at age 13. In an eerie twist, Season 5, Episode 19 predicted this. Steve's Leaving David Garrison played Steve Rhodes in the show. He wanted to work in live theater and decided to leave. To help transition the story, the writers had Steve and Marcy gradually grow apart so he didn't have to appear as often. 
Garrison would then appear in one episode each season and he'd be working in a different job each time. Recasting Kelly and Bud Kelly and Bud Bundy were siblings in the show. They were played by a teenaged Christina Applegate and a young actor David Faustino. The original pilot featured the characters, but they were played by Tina Caspary and Hunter Carson. The pilot was unaired and the characters were recast. No Emmy Before Baywatch, Married with Children was the longest-running live-action TV series in the history of the Fox network that never won an Emmy Award. Art Imitating Life Some aspects of Ed O'Neill's and Faustino's lives were incorporated into the show. O'Neill used to play football in college, while Faustino had dreams of becoming a rapper. This trivia was later translated into the show in the person of Faustino's alter ego, Grandmaster B. Peggy's Pregnancy Katie Segal had three pregnancies during the years the show was running. The first pregnancy was worked into the script but was later written off as a miscarriage. The other two pregnancies were simply hidden from the live audience. Reason for Cancellation According to Ed O'Neill, the cost of syndication rights did the show in. Reportedly, Sony charged $1 million for each episode, so stations didn't want any more episodes. The show had 260 episodes and only Ed O'Neill appeared in all of them, including the unaired pilot and the lost episode. Lost Tape Season 3, Episode 8, is considered the lost episode because while it was filmed, it was not officially aired in the U.S. until 2002. It was because the episode involved the story of how the Bundy couple, while staying at a motel, discovered a sex tape of the Rhodes couple. They decided to have sex in the motel nevertheless. The two couples then decided to sue the motel. Kelly's Hair Christina Applegate's Kelly had blonde hair on the show. For season 10, however, she had to use a wig because she had worked in the movie Nowhere where she had red hair. Missing Seven Seven was the child of Zemus and Ida Wanker, Peggy's cousins. He appeared in several episodes wherein he was taken into the Bundy residence and basically adopted by Peggy, who began treating him better than she did her own children. After season seven, Seven simply disappeared with no explanation. In a season eight episode, however, Seven's black and white photo appeared on a milk carton as missing. Wrestling Mania The last names of the Bundy and Rhodes families were actually taken from professional wrestlers, King Kong Bundy and Dusty Rhodes. Contrary to what some people believe, the Bundys were not named after Ted Bundy, the infamous serial killer. Vista Credit Card In the show, Visa doesn't exist, but Vista does. In Al Bundy's shoe store, a sign is put up, a credit card sign, advertising Vista. The cast, crew, and producers never confirmed why Vista was used instead of Visa. It may be because the producers didn't want to pay royalties or that it was a foreshadowing of the store's failure as a business. Banned on TV Fox didn't want to air the sex tape episode, I'll See You in Court, because of its suggested content. Terry Ricolta strongly spoke against it, and the producers didn't want to risk any issues because Ricolta was related to Mitt Romney. No Ma'am Club Al Bundy was notoriously anti-feminist, and many of the show's jokes wouldn't fly today. Bundy was the founder of No Ma'am, a men's club, the name is actually an acronym for National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. The club's goals was to prevent the domination of feminists. The Original Al Bundy Ed O'Neill played the defeated patriarch Al Bundy so well that it's difficult to imagine him being played by any other actor. Before O'Neill's auditions, the role was actually offered to Sam Kinison, a comedian known for his brash comedy. It would have been quite interesting to watch Kinnison in the no ma'am scenes. Shoe Shop Ed When Ed O'Neill received his Hollywood Walk of Fame star, fans came out in droves to ask for his autograph. 
the star appears, fittingly enough, in front of a shoe store. After the ceremony, fans asked O'Neill for his autograph, with many asking him to sign their shoes. Roseanne as Peggy Peggy Bundy's role could have been played by comedian Roseanne Barr, who was the first choice. However, she turned it down so she could work in other projects. Ed nailed it. Sam Kinison could have played a brashier, more abrasive Al Bundy, but Ed O'Neill was so good that when he entered the room to audition, he was already in character. Before he could even deliver a line, he was hired right then and there. Kramer could have been it. Another famous comedian, Michael Richards, also auditioned for Al Bundy. Although he lost the part, he did land a huge hit himself just two years later playing Cosmo Kramer in Seinfeld. Al Bundy was too real. Ed O'Neill's role in the show cost him a few film roles. He was originally cast in Flight of the Intruder, but when the movie was played to a test audience, they would laugh and giggle each time he appeared on screen. He was eventually dropped. Real Family A few of the Bundy family's real-life family members also appeared in cameo roles in the show. These included the wife, mother, brother and brother of Ed O'Neill, Christina Applegate, Katie Segal and David Faustina, respectively. Inspired by The Couple Next Door The names of the Bundy couple was taken from the radio comedy show The Couple Next Door. The radio couple were named Alan Bunce and Peg Lynch. The show ran in the 1940s and 1950s. It was about a suburban couple going through the joys and travails of life. Declining Quality The later seasons of the show were not as good a quality as its earlier episodes. Katie Segal's real hair, for example, could be seen through the large red wig. According to fans, the wig represented the decline of the series, beginning at season 9 until 11. Buck's Thoughts Buck was eventually reincarnated as Lucky. Sometimes the dog's thoughts could be heard through voiceovers. The actors who provided their voices were Cheech Marin and Kevin Curran for Buck and Kim Weisskopf for Lucky. Married with 21 Jump Street Both Christina Applegate and David Faustino appeared as guest stars on one episode of 21 Jump Street, which also aired on Fox. The undercover cop show featured a young Johnny Depp, who would go on to become a huge star. Why O'Neill Stayed When Ed O'Neill was asked why he stayed on the show, he said that he was scared of being typecast. This was true for a while until he landed the role in Modern Family. The other reason was that his income was increasing. It might be because he loved playing a well-liked character. Kelly's Comprehension Kelly Bundy's character was not a bright girl. That's why she almost never shone reading in the show. However, there were early episodes where she could be seen trying to read Garfield comics. That was likely because the orange tabby is a known misanthropist and would fit quite well with the worldview of the show. Not so impressive ratings. Married with Children enjoyed a large, enthusiastic fan base and cultural popularity, but it did not perform well ratings wise. The highest rating it ever received was for season 6 at 29th. Other seasons simply showed up in the 50s and 60s. Syndication Success The low ratings didn't hurt the show eventually because it was a massive hit when it went into syndication. When the show's reruns were aired, its fan base increased. Officer Dan is an FBI man? Dan Tullis Jr. played the corrupt cop and friend of Al Bundy. However, he also appeared in one episode in season 6 as an FBI officer. Many fans were confused at this casting choice. White Door, Red Door The front door of the Bundy's home appears white in long-distance shots, but it appears red in closer shots. The set also uses a red door. No explanation was provided by the show. Peggy the Outlaw After the show's run, Katie Segal later landed a guest role on Sons of Anarchy. 
In an episode where she had to be on the run, it was suggested that her character use red hair dye to disguise herself. She acts revolted by the idea, but it was obvious that it was a nod to her unforgettable character, Peggy Bundy. No politics, please. The show did not escape the attention of political commentators who wanted to label it as conservative. However, Katie Segal thinks that the show should have been and appreciated for what it is, 20 minutes of fun. Flush as the Ethos Initially, the show's creative team wanted to create an establishing statement for the show. Instead of a statement, however, they chose the sound of a flushing toilet, and it became the show's iconic trope. Longest Running Show for a Brief Moment Due to its popularity among the fans, Married with Children became the longest-running scripted TV series during its final season. Out with Continuity The show had some issues with continuity. One such was Peggy's background. Peg was supposed to have been from Wisconsin. However, later episodes mentioned how she and Al had been classmates at Polk High School. More Pro Wrestling Vibes Luke Ventura entered as one of Al Bundy's colleagues in Season 1. He was named after Jesse the Body Ventura, a pro wrestler because the producers were wrestling fans. Jesse Ventura later became Minnesota Governor in 1998. Mad Dad Al Bundy had a favorite show in the show titled Psycho Dad. Each time the theme song would play, it would use different lyrics. Bud's Age In the early episodes of the series, Bud Bundy was 11 years old and his birthday was on January 22, 1976. Later, his birthday changed to January 22, 1974 to match the real age of David Faustino. Risqué Maiden Name Peggy's maiden name was Wanker and she has her roots in Wanker County, Wisconsin. The term wanker is a vulgar slang word in England. Royal Inspiration As a young girl, Meghan Markle would spend time on the set of the show. Her father, Thomas Markle, worked as the director of photography. 